Hello, um, another quick video about fixing something. Um, just to make sure you're watching the right video, we'll look at the problem and then um, we'll take it from there. So uh, it's an HP uh, Pavilion Slimline uh, desktop computer. Uh, this one dates back to Windows 7. Um, it's actually got Windows 10 installed, as you can see on the monitor. Um, and it's obviously turned on. And this is the problem. When you press the eject button, nothing happens. Now there is a little door on there. I'll just get my knife and we'll pop it open. I'll just give it a little, a little tease. So you can see there's a drive in there. If I press the button on the drive, it ejects. And if I give it a little shove, it goes back in again. If I press that, nothing happens. And if I go to Windows and find the drive in Windows and right click on the drive and select eject, it um, ejects it. So the problem is when you press the official eject thing, it doesn't work. So we'll um, shut it down and um, and fix that. So it's uh, shut down and I've um, unplugged the mains from it and um, just moved things out of the way. It's actually on its side now and it's resting on a ream of paper just to raise it up above the desk. We'll see why that is important in a minute. First job, get this plate off. I'll just loosen the screw. It's a, it's a captive bolt and then it just slides off. Put that to one side. And what we're after is um, working out what exactly is behind there, which sounds like a switch, doesn't it? A bit of a spoiler alert there. So I'm going to change the, the end of my screwdriver to. Um, flat blade, it's got a little Torx in there, um, but I'm just going to use a flat blade. And that's that one screw taken out. And then this comes out, it's like a big fan. And there's three clips, one, two, three. If I lift up that one and then just hold it and lift up that one and then hold it and then get that one and hold it the front folds down and lifts out it's got like a little hook arrangement there if you can see that you probably can't so it doesn't so it, it goes in and then clips just to make it um, fast for when they're assembling them and what we find is it's actually a switch uh, so it's not a mechanical mechanism that pushes that button. It's a switch and it's got a bit of wire trailing from it. So if I move a few of these cables out the way and then just trace where the cable goes to, there's actually a metal clip that's holding them bunched together at the bottom there, but there's one bit that comes out and it's that bit, because that's the same cable look. And at the other end is a white plug. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a white plug. So I'm just gonna put that to one side for a moment. And then I'm gonna take the CD-ROM drive out. And there's a lever which you pull out and push down and that releases it. And now I'm gonna disconnect the power and the SATA data cable. And I'm just going to pull the cd on drive out. And what we see at the back of the drive that's fitted is the usual SATA connectors. There's also another rather conspicuous little white socket. And that little white socket is the same size as that little cable. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the drive back in like this. And while it's going in, I'm going to reconnect the power and the data cable. I'm going to take this mysterious little cable here. It's got a little key on the top and there's a little key on top of the socket as well. So you can't put it in the wrong way. And then that just pushes in there. And I'll push the drive in a little bit more so it lines up with the hole and put that catch back on. And now I'm going to put this fan back in. Making sure these cables don't um, get in the way of it. So we'll just hook that in there and push it in there and then lock it in place. And we'll get that screw again. That's back in. And we'll take the front. And the front fits in at the bottom and then levers up and clips on. And we'll just put the power back on. Like that. And we'll stand it up. I'll make a few adjustments so that we can see the screen and stuff. Get that paper out of the way. Move it to there. So yeah, you get a good view of that. Get the screwdriver out of the way. Get the monitor in place. So the power's on. So when I press the button, it should obviously power up. And then we'll see what happens. So when they're manufacturing it, the, the little computer goes along a little production line and people add bits to it. Normally, corresponding to what the spec sheet says it should be. Um, whilst we're here, you heard that big fan noise then? Um, there's, there's a quite a big noisy fan noise on it and that's the fan on the graphics card. So if your um, HP Pavilion Slimline is making a bit of a noise, that'll be the fan, which is good news because you can just swap the card out. But anyway, so that's now booted. So now what? let's see what happens when I press the button. It opens and it closes and it opens and it closes. So the reason your drawer doesn't open when you press the button is because the switch that does it isn't connected to the drive. Um, this poses a problem if you've got a damaged CD-ROM drive or DVD-ROM drive and you want to um, replace it with a new one because in order for that to work you have to get a drive that's got the little connector on it. So um, yeah, if that's um, if that's helped you, then um, liking and subscribing is always appreciated. Um, if you've got any comments about it, um, then stick them in the comments. And um, as always, thanks for watching.